Welcome to my show where we talk about love, where we allow ourselves joy and compassion, where we are open to our authenticity, where speaking our truth is our birthright and we claim our abundance, our prosperity. Welcome here to this space where I share my love for healing, my love for connecting with women on a soul level, because I believe that we all have a purpose on this planet, and I am here to help you awaken that aspect of yourself. I am here to help you claim your inner power of safety and trust and creativity and confidence and love and healing and speaking your truth and intuition and connecting with those around you. Here and now is this space that I have created to join women together. I love you and I'm so grateful for you. May we lead with love and light, joy and compassion, my beautiful soul sisters. I love showing up and sharing my heart with my soul sisters. Thank you for showing up here with me. Today I'm feeling vulnerable. I am experiencing a lot of the shift and this transformation of fall. And it's been one of those weeks that feels slow in moments. And then it feels really fast. So I think think it would be a great idea for us together to ground down from all of the emotions and I just had a lovely fall pumpkin sugar-free coconut pumpkin drink so I'm feeling the caffeines and this has been something I've really been working on is rooting so join me my beautiful soul sisters if you're in a space where you can allow yourself to ground down to find a comfortable posture, a shape that suits your body. If you're moving, if you're driving, maybe you can shift your posture, elongate your spine. If you are in a space where you can close your eyes, just take a moment to turn within, to bring a beautiful breath down into that low belly, expanding and growing and making the belly big. Really sighing with relief, knowing that you have arrived here, bringing the breath in and shifting the perspective of how your stomach, your abdomen needs to look and make it big and beautiful and round like the Buddha. And with Buddha energy, perhaps we can smile and exhale, let it go. And just taking a moment as you continue to expand with your breath belly and just tune in noticing how it's feeling in your body today spiraling from the top of the head and scanning down the face neck shoulders tuning into any tension or tightness without judgment here we hold space for our inner self around our hearts how is it feeling in the heart and the spine and the back where are you holding on to? Hold space with love and light here, spiraling around that belly and perhaps any tightness that you're holding in the belly, any need to suck in the belly or make your belly a different shape or your hips or your butt and bringing love into this space, this space of creation and rooting as we spiral around the legs and our roots and we give great gratitude here as we check in and perhaps with that beautiful breath, we could bring it all the way in and shoot our roots down into the earth. And if you could imagine roots digging deep down, allowing you to be connected to this beautiful supporting energy of earth, of mother earth, of Gaia, bringing that energy all the way up and spiraling it up each chakra all the way up to the top of the head and connecting us all the way to the universe and knowing that this energy is ever expansive 
and loving and that this energy exists here within this moment from the top of the head to the bottom of the toes and it expands into this invisible realm. Breathing a breath of love in for your body, your mind, and your spirit. And allowing that love to fill up the space around you. Breathing compassion in for the body, the mind, and the spirit. Exhaling it out. Breathing forgiveness to the mind, to the body, and the spirit. Allowing that forgiveness to fill up the space around you. And taking a moment to place a hand on your heart. And just acknowledging your heart today. Maybe the pain, the cracks, the wounds, the craters. Just holding space here. And with that rooted breath, bringing your palms, kissing palms to that beautiful healing heart of yours and honoring and acknowledging where you are and knowing that this is your journey and it's not the end point that we seek, that it is the journey that we show up for. And today we honor and acknowledge the love and the light within ourselves. And we acknowledge that within all beings, within all plants and animals surrounding us, Namaste. How are you feeling today? Notice how you're feeling now versus how you were feeling before that little practice. Taking those few minutes, and I know self-care can be a challenge, taking time to do the things that we know that we need to do for ourselves, slowing down, breathing, taking a moment to acknowledge how you're feeling, to acknowledge what is going on within you. We get so stuck up in feeling like we can't feel. And then when we do feel, we feel like there's something wrong. So then we reach right for that coffee drink. We grab our phone. We try to get that rush of dopamine from those social media likes or dislikes. We determine our worth, our value from out there but it doesn't come from out there. I spent my whole freaking life looking out there for my value and for my worth. And when I started my awakening journey, which it's crazy to say, it was when Jack, my youngest, was a baby. And he is, he's going to be nine this next year. And I was thinking about this when I was driving home. I'm going to be 40 this year. This is my last year in this body in my 30s and when I started this journey I had so much pain so much suffer me suffer me suffer me right and these vulnerable topics make me lisp lisp and my words escape me sometimes so much pain though and I was at this like teetering breaking point where I just there was I was like at rock bottom I felt like so trapped and depression and anxiety and I had three kids and that's hard. I had a newborn, a two-year-old and a four-year-old and it was hard, but I knew that there was something, something that had to shift and yoga kept coming to me and I didn't even know what yoga was. I thought it was just some way that you moved your body in all these weird postures, possibly even thought it was like this culty religious practice and it kept coming to me. And even when I was so trapped and I was so lost in judgment of myself, I was so lost in judgment, like judgment ruled my world and judgment of what other people thought about me, that I was, there was like this sliver of me. It was like my inner child. She was just like open, open to this, this thing, this weird thing. And I always thought of myself as weird, but back then it was a negative thing. (laughs) now I'm like, yes, weird, get weird with me. Let's get weird. Let's see how freaking weird we can get. I, I'm a weirdo and I, I love that. And every, every practice that I encountered, it was showing up on the mat, like the first year. And even now, almost nine years later, showing up and sitting with the discomfort, sitting with the angst, sitting with the thoughts, 
And that's where it started. And that's where it is. And knowing that growth is a journey. We get so trapped in this end point. And especially, I think, even with this, with healing. And it even can be, like, kind of cliche, like, oh, I'm healed. Some people have that misperception. And I had that, too. I thought that from yoga, from meditation, from spiritual practices, from all these different things that I do and rituals that I practice that one day I will be healed. And, and I was once again caught in those lies of life. But healing is our journey. And oh, I have to share with you. So I did this incredible trade with one of my soul sisters, who is one of the founding four of the Hive, who is this incredible, intuitive, amazing mother, grandmother, beautiful tree. She is just rooted and grounded and intuitive and just this divine healing conduit. And it was probably about three or four weeks ago where we were talking about doing an energy trade where I would make her a mala and I make these beautiful custom malas and I would tap into her energy and notice kind of her subtle body and in yoga the subtle bodies our energetic body our soul our spirit our chakras and where I felt she needed that energy and then I I, I asked where are you struggling, like emotionally, mentally, physically, or spiritually? And sometimes that can be really hard question. It can be really hard and vulnerable, but I have such this heart connection with this woman. And I feel like my spirit has such this space. I hold this safe space where women do feel comfortable sharing that with me because they know I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help you on your healing journey. And then I tune in after the emotion so a lot of things that i i hear um, from women that i make these pieces for is a lot of anxiety judgment self-worth value and so uh, with this piece that i made for this beautiful woman it was so of course divine because in stock of course that i had in stock like every energetic piece and even the colors that she just naturally is like called towards, I just had them. And of course it was just like, boom, and I created it. And I hadn't made a mala in like four weeks. And I think that day I ended up making four pieces because I was just in spirit, inspired. Inspired is that in spirit. It's when you lose track of all time, space, reality, and nothing matters. Even if you had to pee, it wouldn't matter. You just hold it. You don't even eat and you're like, oh my gosh, it's been like, four hours and I haven't even got up. You're just so in juke the zone. And that's how I was this day when I was creating these pieces. And I made her this beautiful mala and she is so in tune with energy. She's like me on a whole new level. She's more like that sensory perspective. I keep saying, I'm going to check in my letters to a star seed book. I want to check and confirm these pieces for you. It's so funny. Often I'm like, no, I don't need to get this, but I just really wanted to share it. This is from Rebecca Campbell's Letters to a Starseed, which my next podcast I'm going to be doing a book club. This book is changing everything. Not everything, but lots of things. So she talks about, we are all intuitive. We were born intuitive. Think of children. Children are so in tap. They're so tuned in and will say the most miraculous things ever. They just will connect to your heart. And have you ever had that, those moments where like a small child says something about like a past life? I have experienced that many times with my nephews and nieces and even my kids. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And you just tear up immediately. So the Rebecca Campbell talks about that our intuition isn't this fluffy puffy or what is the word some people say? Woo woo. I never resonated with that. It's not woo woo. It's something innately built within all of us we have this intuition it is our birthright we were put here with intuition but what happens is it takes those few moments when we were a child and it's so it's so intact between zero to four it is like you are this like channel still with the divine and then it takes those times when adults or people around us say that's not true that's make-believe. Magic isn't real. And then 
we start seeing things in the world that confirm that because we can't see the invisible. But the thing is, is that it's this feeling thing. If intuition is your feeling per, per, perceptions, it's your feeling sensors. Think of those times when you just get goosebumps when you walk into a room. Like, what is that? Like, you can't see it. You can sense it. You just know. Like, it's just an inner knowingness. And so there's different, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different kinds, seven, I didn't even know, there's seven different kinds of our intuition. And the first one is clairvoyance, which is clear seeing. And in this book, she talks about that it's the most common intuitive sense. And it is those visions. So I was in this beautiful healing session yesterday with my lovely, beautiful soul sister, Jennifer. And she is clear all of these things. And she kept, she gets visions and messages. And she even had a spider land on her, which most people, even me, would probably freak out if a spider landed on her. And she said, wow, this is rare. Rarely do I have another spirit coming in. And the spider landed on her and was giving her all of these messages. And it was these messages of this feminine energy that's here with me and that's always around me, protecting me and bringing all these beautiful messages. And then Jennifer got different visions when she was working. She was tapping into my past life. She was my left calf, which the left side body is our feminine energy. Um, in the left calf, like she kept weaving through my Achilles tendons. Oh my gosh, I'm looking out the window real quick and I see a hawk soaring. Whenever I see hawks, <laughs> they've been showing up so much for me. They're like this spirit guide, animal guide, telling me I'm on the right path. So thank you to the hawks in nature. I'm so grateful. Mm. I saw a hawk yesterday too, right before my appointment with Jennifer. It's so beautiful. Have you ever just stopped and watched a bird fly? I'm like off subject. Beautiful, beautiful. It's like one of those like blue sky days and this beautiful hawk and there's these pine trees and so grateful for today uh but she was like tuning in through my achilles tendon and she could tell that my second heart chakra my second heart is was locked and it was crazy she would put her hands on my calf and in these spaces i just felt immense pain and at one point i just could feel this energetic like sadness arriving and she when she was on my calf she said abandonment, abandonment, and she kept getting these messages. Here, I'm going to go through these messages real quick, or these other player things, because I was talking about this a lot last episode. Clear audience is clear hearing when you just hear those messages. And sometimes they can come in the form of, like, Jennifer, she got these hits of, for me, it was abandonment, control, uh, it was like that I needed to love myself. I needed to give myself the same love that I give everyone else. <laughs> Isn't that so interesting? Even though I do all of these practices to love myself, but I still, I give out more than I give to myself. And then clear, contis, clear cognitance is clear knowing. And that's, I have that also. I feel like some there's moments where I just have this knowing. I just know things and it just happens and it just is there. And that's how children can be great teachers for us to channel our intuition and really tune into our intuitive powers. And then there's clairsentience, which is clear feeling. And that's also my friend Jennifer is clairsentient. It's she can just touch and open up different spaces in your body. And when I do energy work, I more tune into feeling energy instead of feeling the actual sensation of the body. And in the last few years of energy work, I actually have been feeling more called to touch the body. And sometimes even I, like, I feel called to, it's almost like disrupting and shaking up the energy in that spot and releasing it or, or signaling it to move through the body, which that clear feeling can be clear, clear feeling, clear sentient can be something that you can open to. Like if you do this practice where you just you take your hands and you rub them together like you're warming up, like it's really cold out. This happens, it's been really cold up in the mountains in the morning and then beautiful seven degrees in the afternoon. And then you warm up, warm up, and then you pause and then you just slowly peel your hands away. Try that if you are in a space where you can feel that energy that's 
clairsentient. You can feel the energy pulsating between your hands. You can't deny it. It's just, it just is. And that also can bring you to that clear knowing. It like the energy just is. And then clear touching. That's, I guess that is a little bit different. Feeling is when you're feeling it in the body. Okay. So let me kind of rephrase that. I can't even read some of these. It's like C-L-A-I-R-T-A-N-G-E-N-C-Y. Clear, clear, I don't know why my brain is not computing that, but that one is the clear touching. So reversing, clear feeling is when you just have feelings, which actually one of my other soul sisters gets that. She will just get like this ping in her body. And I will also get, I get these like ping pings in my back. It's almost like where my angel wings would be. And I can feel, and that's like, ooh, Shelly, 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 Shelly. Like, pay attention, pay attention. Or yesterday, I went on a walk with Junie. And have you ever gotten that, like, high pitch frequency in your ear where it's, some people think it's annoying and it's a ringing? That is more of that clear, um, clear audience, that clear hearing. Those are messages from your guides, your angels, whatever your God is telling you to pay attention to this moment to really become present here. The other one is clear aliens, which is clear smelling. Some people can use their sense of smells and like say maybe someone has passed away. Like I've had my grandpa passed away when I was 13 and he was a smoker. And sometimes I can feel his energy and then I can smell cigarettes. And so it's like, I know that that is his energy around me telling me that he's right here supporting me and guiding me. And then clear gustance, which is clear tasting. So that sometimes you will just have your sensory perceptive of taste um, and you can taste different things that will access from a memory or maybe a flavor will come up and that will remind you of someone or something that can help. So I really feel like I, I really, I like knowing these things and not everyone resonates, but knowing that we were all born intuitive and our bodies are literally always giving us messages constantly, constantly. They are here. They're telling us and guiding us. But again, we have shut it down. So I really encourage you, my beautiful soul sister, if you are listening to this episode, to set the intention to open to your intuition, to open to your intuitive powers. And it doesn't have to be whatever those horrible names that people like to call things or make fun of, that we are all intuitive, just like our children are, just how we were as children, that we are these intuitive creatures. And we do all just have this knowing, we have this deep knowing within us. And when we can take time to slow down, to feel what it feels like in our body, and knowing that we can have super big blocks and locks and even me so I've been nine years on my healing journey and I've been really tuning into energy work for almost five years I'm on my fifth year now and I do healing practices on myself healing practices on other people and I go yesterday and I get this I receive I'm open to to receiving healing because I I am a giver. I am an open heart. I always want to help everyone. But then right when it comes to me, it's like I'm the last one on my to-do list. But yesterday, I took this time and I got all these beautiful messages that came through that I need to love myself more. And it was so crazy, like the physical pain and where my beautiful soul sister just could lay her hand on me. And that pain hurt. Like there was times where I wanted to yell and be like, stop touching like that hurts so bad and I was I was crying and I just was saying open open like I am open to healing this wound I am open to feeling this pain and it hurt it hurt so bad and when that message came through about abandonment issues and she said it wasn't just abandonment issues from this life it was from many past lives that I've been recreated and I keep playing the same story. And a message that came through too to her was that I need to recreate that story, that I'm not alone, that I'm fully supported. I kept 
like when that abandonment word came up, I could feel the feelings of that. And then she said, forgive, forgiveness. And then in that moment, I just said, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I was opening forgiveness in that space where I was feeling the pain where her physical hands were touching my calf. And then it was like shooting up to different parts of my body. And when she got over to my right side, my right body, which is our Pingali Nadis, our masculine energies, that she sensed that in a past life that I was a little boy. I was a sickly little boy in one of my past lives, and I had a very abusive mother figure who would often on abandon me, and then when she was around, she would abuse me, and then I had no father figure. And it was so interesting because immediately the the body the ego part of me said oh my gosh oh i feel so sad for you and then it was like that need to victimize myself i said no i'm not here to victimize myself i'm here to hold space for that and then she invited me permission to bring up the feelings of how much i love my sons and how much i love my nephews and to spiral that into my feminine energy and to bring that love because she said that I've built this wall in my heart chakra, that there's this wall between my masculine and my feminine energy. And I've built that wall to protect myself because I've gone through so much pain in this life and past lives. And I have struggled with abandonment issues of my, my in this life of my birth father, and then abandonment issues of even a birth mother who was here, but who just wasn't able to fulfill that maternal role that I needed her to. And with my women's circle that I've been doing in Estes Park with just two soul sisters, we've been doing it for two years now. It's kind of like my, my private soul sister group is we've been doing a lot of work on being our own mother, on nurturing our inner child, because we are that for ourselves, that we don't have to rely on this weird perception that we've put on our mother figure and even our father figure, it's we're so fed these lies in our society that our mother needs to nurture us and take care of us and do all the things. And I, I say this and I'm like, oh my gosh, I do those things for my kids. Like probably almost like too much and like overly, I'm overly trying to make up for this life and my past lives. And even our father, like our father figures, we hold these perceptions of what they need it to be. And it's interesting because in this life, I wasn't really close with my my dad, my birth dad from seven to 18 and really probably into my 20s. And then he's came back, but still even the roles and like the perceptions I held over him. And then even my step dad that like once I turned an adult, it was like our relationship kind of just fell apart. And then he just wasn't there and hasn't been there. But what I've been doing instead of feeling sad for this, because this is my journey and this is what the universe has given me because I need this. Like we have to stop victimizing ourselves and feeling sad for ourselves because we all have our souls. They have these very specific purposes and deep, deep within our inner work, there is this realm called the Akashic records or Akashic some people say uh, Akashic records, which are kind of like our soul lineage mapping. And if you are interested, there's so many different types of healers that can kind of get you in tune with that, uh, like quantum healing, or even if you know someone who is super intuitive that can help you access the those Akashic records. And there's beautiful practices that you can do. And it's interesting with my years of intuitive work, I can close my eyes and kind of shift and I can bring myself kind of spiraling. You can spiral up into light or the heavens or spiral deep into an oak tree, deep, deep down into the roots of your ancestry. And you can imagine rows of books, just books everywhere, light books everywhere. And you can bring yourself and your energy with your spirit guides to your Akashic records and to your past lives and to your life lessons, to your karma, your dharma. And you can open to what that is. And I know when I first started though on this journey that visualization 
and going kind of deep into meditation was so hard. It was so hard because I couldn't get out of my mental, my, my mind. I couldn't get out of thoughts. And it just over time kind of came because I, I was open. I was open to opening this part of myself. Even though I didn't even really know that I was, I would just, I really feel like that saying, as the student is ready, the teacher appears, just like meditations would show up. And then I would show up for them and sometimes they would be amazing and profound and I could go deep within myself. And sometimes all I could see was black and I could feel sadness and darkness and, and then I would feel like a failure. And knowing that our experiences are exactly what they need to be because I think even in the work that I do, that we get so kind of stuck on like the light aspect that we're light workers and, but where there is light, there's darkness. Think of at night, there's the moon and the moon lights through the darkness. And even in the daytime, like you can go into the shadowy parts. There's these like shadow dark sides and we don't have to be scared of our shadow self. We don't have to be scared of these dark parts because like that darkness, that darkness is those low vibrational experiences that we've been through that have molded us and they've helped us get here. So when I found out that my past life, I had this physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually abusive mother and I was like a sickly little boy kind of trapped in that, instead of feeling sad about that, I hold space for that energy. I hold space for healing that. And it was interesting because hearing about that, it really, it just immediately brought me to my son Milo and the energy that I've been holding with him. He is, he's like 10, but feels like he's 14. And he has so much resistance towards me. And I lately have been just kind of like at this breaking point with him where I've been, I've like tried the gentle approach and the kind approach. And then I feel like I'm just kind of being this like not nice mom. I don't feel like I know how to communicate with him in any ways that aren't just like, ah, like I just, I'm kind of like calling him out. And, and then I feel like we're just like raising our voices and we're yelling at each other. And then we just have this gross energy. And in the mornings, he's just like this anxiety ball. <laughs> and I'm coming back to that healing, that inner little boy within me, healing that energy. And I know that part of it is healing energy with him. And I got this intuitive hit that maybe he was that energy of my mother. And maybe that's why, because I have this resentment. So this is our dark, this is my darkness within that resentment, that guilt, that shame, that blame towards him. And this life, we've been brought together to help heal that on, on deeper levels. It's, it's like deep and expansive and not everyone will resonate, but I really like, we have these soul connections. We have this karma with people and it's up to us to stay stagnant, to keep repeating the same patterns with these people in our lives or to shift it. And at the beginning of my session, my healing session yesterday, she laid out like five different card decks. And immediately I saw this like leather bound, orangey brown. It was beautiful, this card deck and it had a sun and a moon. And I immediately was like pulled to that. And then she, uh, Jennifer called on, I, I think, I don't know if it was at this point or not, but just called on like the energy of light and lineage and our guardian angels and our spirit guides and our ancestors. And then she held the deck and tuned into the energy of the deck. And then I held the deck and, and she told, she stood back. So she wasn't like protruding her energy on my, cause she has such this power energy field. And I took the deck and cut it into three and then shuffled it. And then I swooped it across the bed and, and then I chose a card. And just before that, I, oh, I was trying to think of what it was. It was very intuitive in the moment. And I was just feeling like, I feeling like I have this block from maybe a past life or this life. And is it something that I need to let go of? Or is it something that I need to heal and like break free from? And so that was my intention. And I drew this beautiful card with two feathers and my card, and it was an oracle deck, and it was inner peace that I needed to find 
my inner peace, through self-love, through nurturing myself, through forgiveness, which forgiveness is such a powerful and hard spiritual practice. And it's not this surface thing that we think that it is. It's not this thing that just you say, oh, I forgive you. Do forgive me. Forgiveness is really tuning in and tapping into that energy within yourself, that inner work. This is forgiveness work is something that we all need, whether it's from this life or past lives or relationships with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, our grandparents, our aunts, our uncles, our ancestors. We have this, this karma that we have to forgive. We can't hold on to. And that's, that's where that resentment and guilt that comes hard and that low vibration can suck us down. And knowing that forgiveness is one of these high vibration emotions, that forgiveness can break through that resentment. Forgiveness is the healing cure to our relationships. And when we forgive my beautiful soul sisters, it doesn't mean we're forgiving this person from what they've done and how they've harmed us and how they hurt us. Forgiveness is for us. That's our inner work because you'll find like me, probably, most likely, we're all intertwined, that you are not going to go up to this person who has harmed you and caused you this great pain and say, I forgive you because they might, they're not going to be able to receive that. Most likely, they're not going to be able to receive it in a way that you need them to. So when I say forgiveness is for you, it's not for them. That is a practice that you do within yourself alone in your bathroom. I know it's hard when we have kids to actually have alone time. This year has been actually this space where one day a week, I actually get one day a week where I have three kids in school and I like get that alone time to take time for myself. And that's why practices like taking a yoga class and maybe even a yoga class geared towards forgiveness. And I say this and I'm like, I'm getting ready to create my website. So I need to, I'm going to write this down because I'm obviously feeling called to this, to have an entire practice, not just one practice, but many practices around forgiveness and how we can tap into that forgiveness energy. And I'm, I'm going to create this. And so we're going to do this through movement because movement is a way to move energy that is stuck through stillness, through getting quiet it through reflection and writing through journaling I'm going to listen back to this hold me accountable I'm holding myself accountable and I'm going to build a course around a course a forgiveness course maybe it's seven or eleven those are my magical numbers seven practices eleven practices towards forgiveness and forgiveness right it's like an onion it's like a layering thing and there's this practice that I actually shared in my book, Awaken You, a forgiveness practice that you can open yourself up to connecting with the energy of someone who's caused you great pain. So this could be our self-care practice today is our self-care practice is forgiveness. And it's bring up the energy of someone who's caused you great pain. Maybe it could be the person who's harmed you the most or someone who you're having maybe daily struggles with, and it could even be your spouse or your children, parents, whoever it is. I, I immediately think of like a parental figure who's caused me just great pain and struggle that it's still there. I've done a lot of healing, but they're still there. And you say, I'm open to forgiving you this much. And maybe it's 1%. I think we're kind of even in these spiritual practices, analytical. 1%. I remember when I started this practice, I said, I'm open to forgiving my birth mother, 80%. And really, I was open to forgiving her like 1%. So be realistic because even 1% of forgiveness is huge. And then the next day, I'm open to forgiving you one more percent. I'm opening my heart to forgiving you and letting that stuck energy go because knowing that when we trap in and when we resent and we blame other people, who is it causing the most pain to? Us. Me. You. Us. It's causing pain to us. And that energy is growing. 
and knowing that where your attention goes, energy flows. So the more resentment, the more hatred, the more dislike, the more blame you throw energetically at this person the more it's going to hurt you because that's manifesting in you, in your body. Like me, I obviously have been blaming, I've been resenting, I've been trapping things in my, my second heart, which guess what? I didn't even know that we had a second heart. I've got a second heart for me in my calf, <laughs> trapped, that I'm open to forgiving because forgiveness, it's like a gateway to our spiritual heart, to our energy centers. And forgiveness resides deep down into our root chakra, into the Manipura chakra. Those are our roots that connect us here into how we can feel safe, into how we can trust. And a lot of times we get locks here, right, from those parental figures who maybe weren't there for us in a way that we needed them to be. Maybe we had a huge break where we didn't see one of our parents. Maybe we've had a, a parent die at a young age or both parents. Perhaps there's abandonment issues from adoption and literally being abandoned. I have a friend who has two daughters who were abandoned from their parents in Asia who were left like at ages of like three, just dropped off on a street corner, abandoned, abandonment. And that's deep. Those are our deep wounds. And then for me, you know, abandonment comes up in different ways. And it's interesting because we can bring those abandonment issues with us in our relationship with our spouse. Because when I was in this healing practice, this like makes me want to cry too. She said that when, when my mother had abandoned me, that I, as a little girl, back, 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 other lives, and maybe that was this life, I abandoned myself too, and it rang true to this life. And I was like, oh, I did. I abandoned myself. I said, it's not safe here. It's not safe to love you. So I'm going to leave too. And I checked out. And I checked out. But here today, no more. I don't choose. I don't choose to abandon my inner child, even though that was the story that I was shown. That was the path that was given to me. I choose to not abandon her. I choose to love her. I choose to forgive her. I choose to forgive my inner child. Digging deep, deep at the core of my heart, deep at the core of my roots who told me that it wasn't safe to be here, that it wasn't safe to trust people. And it's so, it's so vulnerable and it's so hard. And I, I reflect even with my relationship with my husband and so much of that just subconsciously I have put on him. I just immediately assumed that he would abandon me, that he would, he would leave me. And even though we've been together for 20 years, like you can be in a relationship and still feel abandoned and feel alone. And the more I open to this, these old wounds and this old hurt, the more I feel, I see that I can let that go because that's not the truth. Of, of us in our relationship. It's not, that's not where, that's not where it's been, but that has been the story that I have replayed over and over. And so my beautiful soul sister, I ask you, perhaps maybe in your life, maybe you can take a moment of inner reflection to notice what story, what sad story have you been playing on repeat? Where does it come from? What are its deep roots? And I know it's deep, it's deep work. And we must ask ourselves, where, where is this? And sometimes it's that unknowing that we just have to sit with that. Just open to those questions, open to reflecting, to opening up our wounds and remembering that healing pain is action. And when I was like deep into that energy session yesterday, it was, it was crazy because she had gone down to my feet and I got this like horrible pain that radiated and it like shot from my feet up my leg through my roots 
all the way through to my right eyebrow. And it was like this like burning pain that I wanted to just like grab and scream. But I didn't. I was just like holding space for that. And I feel like if you've ever birthed a child or not or seen a birth is that life and healing is so much like birth that it comes on its own timing if you're patient enough that we don't need to induce our pain. We need to just intuitively, organically allow and trust our bodies to bring pain up when it comes. And right, it will come in physical sensation. So if your knee is throbbing, if your back is aching, if your neck is holding energy, if it's holding tension, hold space for that pain. Love that pain. You rub yourself there. Put your actual hands on that space. Send loving energy. Send forgiveness there because this pain, it's coming up for a reason. That pain arises so we can allow it. But often what we do is we think, woe is me. Oh, this hurts so bad. Why am I, why is this happening to me? Ask yourself, like, if you are asking those questions of why this is happening to me, that means that we're still stuck in that victim mentality that we were all born as Louise Hay, our beautiful spiritual mentor shared, victims of victims. And their mothers and fathers were victims of victims. But here and now, we choose to shift that consciousness. We are no longer victims. We are accountable, awakened humans who are in charge of our own shit, who choose to shift that paradigm. And we choose to not teach our children. We choose not to teach and send that vibration of victimhood out anymore. That we feel this pain, we allow it. I almost imagine this portal of light and love, light and love, or I just say light and love, like I am healing, I am healing, and I bring that to that space so we can open and move that energy. And right, because what we resist persists. So checking into your body, and if you're having any physical pains or manifestations, and yes, some things can be environmental or induced from injuries or illnesses, but really tuning into that everything is a manifestation. Like everything truly has a spiritual, spiritual meaning, deeper, deeper, deeper. Metaphoric, not metaphorically, but from this deeper spiritual, spiritual space. And knowing that instead of saying, why is this happening? We could open to this is happening for me for a reason. And we are spirits having this human experience because maybe all of these experiences are here for us. That back pain, that knee injury, that shoulder injury, that throat ache, that pinging sensation in the eyes is here because we need to experience what this feels like. We need to hold space for ourselves instead of shoving it away or popping a pill or, you know, nurture yourself. Feel into that pain. What does that pain feel like? And just like childbirth, there are these rushing waves, these contractions that are almost feel like you can't breathe, like you might pass out. And then in a moment, it's stillness and space. And then when the body is ready, once again, that tense, tight, 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 constricting, contracting, body grumbling, grunting, pains are coming back to perhaps birth our awakening, to birth our healing, to give us permission to rebirth ourselves, to recreate ourselves, to rewrite those stories, to rewrite, to rewrite it. And really, I was tapping into myself in that sad story of feeling abandoned and that those feelings of unworth, that I wasn't worthy enough to be loved, that I wasn't worthy enough to have a parent from this life or past lives that supported me and loved me how I needed to, and turning that into that I have all of the love. You have all of the love. We were born. We are all children of the universe, children of God, whatever resonates with you. We are all interconnected. That's why when you get out in nature, it feels so good when you 
drive past a tree or you take a moment to put your hand on a tree where you can feel that loving nature. Because my beautiful soul sister, that nature is you. That we all have tree nature and plant nature and earth and soil and sky and air and ethers and nature. That is a part of us. And when we can allow ourselves to tap into that and with this beautiful season of fall, and if you didn't tune in last week, I did a beautiful episode on autumn equinox and really allowing us to transform with the seasons to instead of resisting this change and this cold and this darkness to allow that the same change within ourselves because it's happening whether or not we're resisting it or allowing it it's happening <sighs> take a deep breath into your beautiful heart exhale and really my beautiful soul sisters set that intention to be open to forgiveness to be open to doing your inner healing work because this inner work is how we shift our karma. This inner work and then how we show up in our everyday lives. This is how, this is how we, this is how it is. We show up and we show up for it all. For the painful, yucky, ugly moments. For the grumpy mom moments. For the dirty kitchen moments. We show up. And I really know for myself that when I'm feeling really uneasy and yucky inside and clustered and having an overabundance of thoughts and allowing overwhelm and anxiety to dominate, that I let my house go and it gets really like, I really, I show through my living space. And, and when I'm feeling more in control and aligned and I'm allowing more balance in, my house is clean. Right now my house is like mostly clean and I'm feeling a lot of relief. I am allowing this healing, this letting go. I really am honoring myself, my heart self. I'm honoring the pain of my inner child. And my beautiful soul, sisters, I hold space for you. I hold space for what's going on in your mind what's going on in your body and your spirits and what's going on in your living space. And I know sometimes when we're feeling just, ah, I, that every space is a mess. And some of us live very frantic like that. And my work, the most spiritually in tune and connected people I've noticed have very cluttered and overwhelmed living spaces. And it's probably because they're constantly being bombarded by intuition. And so knowing that as we were talking about opening up those intuitive parts of ourselves that open up to what you can and take it just like our organizing, our cleaning of the kitchen, like take it one section at a time, one thing at a time, however that resonates. I know that my daughter gets really overwhelmed with her bedroom space, so we cut it, her space in two fourths. And we say, okay, just clean this one fourth. And when you're done, go to the next fourth. And same with our intuition. Tune in to feeling what it feels like inside of your body. Feel like, oh my gosh, my freaking foot is killing me today. Or my hip. Or after that session yesterday, my calf was just like, it was so painful. I could, I could have cried. I feel like I was like hobbling around. But it was, instead of that, I was holding space for that. And this was something really beautiful and amazing. One of my other soul sisters reached out to me yesterday and was sharing with me, and you're probably listening, so you know who, who you are, was that you were feeling very emotional. And I reminded her that our emotions are our truth, especially our tears. When we allow this human to cry, that that is our truth. And she shared with me that she can't cry, that she's shut that space down. And a lot of us do this. I've experienced this a lot in the, the work that I do, the energy that I put out. That especially when we have really deep-seated traumas, that we shut down, we build this wall. Like me, I built this space in between my heart 
separating my masculine and my feminine energy because I've needed to be strong. And knowing that strength is sometimes vulnerability, that we have to be vulnerable enough to allow ourselves to feel what it feels like to be sad. Because the more we trap these emotions in, the deeper seated that they get. And even today, if it's just setting the intention that I am open to crying or I'm open to feeling these emotions that live within me. I remembered in the very first women's circle that I created with another soul sister, it was about five, maybe six years ago. And one of our members had said that she hadn't cried in two years. And you could very much tell that she just had everything just shoved so deep down and she was numb to anything. So it was like she was, I don't know if the word, yeah, desensitized. She was just like desensitized and everything just kind of like went straight through and it was more of this like stoic expression. And a few years later, she had opened herself up to allowing herself to cry and then she cried for like days. And knowing that, I feel like there is this balance between being a blubbering mess, like I say this to my kids, and being emotional, not overly emotional, but really allowing yourself that permission to be human because we're all humans and we're supposed to have these, I, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to say the word supposed, I'm trying to take that word out of my vocabulary, but it sometimes comes up that we were meant is a better word. We were meant to feel all of it. We were meant to feel sadness and cry. We were meant to feel angry and have eruptions. We were meant to feel frustrated. We were meant to feel what peace feels like. We were meant to feel what love feels like, what joy feels like, what gratitude feels like, what loss feels like, what grief feels like, what birth feels like. We were meant to feel all of these emotions and we weren't meant to feel them all at the same time. And I think that's why a lot of people, I, including myself, we often will get consumed in anxiety or overwhelm because we're probably experiencing that myriad of emotions and they're all darting in at the same time. And really just allowing it to organically come, like allow yourself to be emotional. Or I'm like such a sap, like I totally cry in like Disney movies all of the time we watched a dog's journey and a dog's purpose which was oh there's I just love those movies they were so so beautiful and I totally cried both of those movies this weekend just like knowing there is this deeper connection when it comes to our our animals that have these purposes which are I feel like a dog's purpose is to show us what unconditional love feels like no conditions no strings attached, just love. Like that is their beautiful purpose. <sighs> My beautiful soul sisters, I'm so grateful for you. And really, I encourage you to embark on that forgiveness practice, for your self-care practice, to take, even if it's one minute, to breathe into your heart, to feel the pains of your heart, and to tap into somebody's energy who has caused you great pain and to send them forgiveness from within you like you send it out almost like think of an email you're sending that email you're just trusting that it's going where it needs to be so that's the same with your energy you're just you're sending it out that's why prayer is so prevalent and so powerful because you can pray from wherever you are it doesn't matter on this planet a different planet across the world across the country that prayer, you can call it prayer if that resonates with you, that you send that forgiveness prayer out or that forgiveness intention out because this is your healing journey and that we have to do practices that are probably uncomfortable and painful, most likely painful, to help us continuing our inner healing work. And remembering that healing is a practice. It's not a perfect and it's not the end point of the journey. It's it is the journey. I'm so grateful for you, my beautiful soul sisters. Please head over to iTunes and leave Awaken You. 
with Shelley Vaughn a five-star rating and a review. It means the universe to me. And please mostly share this. Share this message with someone that you love, someone who you know needs this because we all need this sisterhood. I really feel this strong calling to connect women and to know that you're not alone in your experiences and where you are. I have Jasper's itching his ear over here. And you can also keep in on my journey in Facebook, Shelly Bond, Instagram, Awaken You, Shelly Bond. My beautiful book, memoir, my guide, Awaken You, Shelly Bond is available on Amazon. I love you and know that you are worthy of healing, that you are worthy of healing this pain within you, that you don't have to stay stuck in yesterday's pain, tomorrow's sadness, that you can choose right, right now. You can set that intention to open up to your intuition, to open up to healing, to open up to forgiveness. And remembering forgiveness is for you. It's not for anyone else. That is your deep, 